For those of you who are joining us today, thanks for being part of the weekly briefing. This is the once a week time that we just take a break, um, add some insights into what we see within the industry, different questions we're being asked, pick a topic. And hopefully this topic for you is kind of speaking to you today because it's come from many of you that are reaching out to us at RevThink. And we often get the business problems, but we hear the personal side of it as well. Um, I'm going to stop my screen sharing and introduce us. You have a panel of three here today of entrepreneurs and former entrepreneurs that uh, probably know this topic very well. Um, it's it, who doesn't as an entrepreneur experience some burnout. Um, Matt Taylor, you used to own your own business, own two different businesses and then sold them to Deloitte. So I know that you have experienced this on two different sides. And then Joe, agency owner, turned rev thinker <laughs> in this process. I'm sure we're going to tell some stories of uh, what, what the burnout's like, where it comes from. And then let's find some practical things that we can actually know that we've seen work for others or advice that we've taken and healed it. Um, and again, I want to, as much as possible, turn the microphone over to many of you that if you are dealing with something, have questions, or can give other people some encouragement, we'd love to hear it from you. Matt, can we just start with the obvious? You are not actually been thrown into jail, right? This bunkhouse that you're living in is by choice. It's true, true. It, it looks a lot like I'm in jail, particularly with this uh, very um, self-harm avoiding uh, tracksuit. But no, I am lucky enough to be at the first Camp Mograph in Australia um, in, uh, in Redland Bay, which is just outside of Brisbane, which is in Queensland. Uh, Brisbane is where Bluey is set. For any of you who watch Bluey, we drove past lots of Queenslander houses. Someone said, that's the Bluey house, um, which is, you know, doing more of a thing. So, yeah, but it's the first one here. All the camp mographers arrive at, uh, at midday. It's, it's morning now. So, I mean, five hours. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So, it's definitely a lot of people coming here to hopefully um, disconnect. It's um, screen-free fun. I'm I'm, I'm drawing all my slides and I'll be giving my, um, my workshop about rekindling and discovering your secret source down by the lake in, a, in a, an outdoor chapel. So you'll, you'll be loving that, Tim. I would love it. You put in the rev in the presentation this day, going to the chapel and yeah. doing the conversation. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's great, uh, the Camp MoGraph process. It almost makes me think there's an element here that it's very timely that you're there meeting with a bunch of entrepreneurs and letting them have their own like breakaway to go to Camp MoGraph. Isn't it part of just the overall environment that you, people are like, it's cell phone free, right? As part of the environment there. There's a real camp element to, to the format. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um, all the workshops are pretty analog. Um, my one's about finding your special source. So we've actually got 80 bottles of hot sauce and the big climax of the workshop, everyone's going to write down what their secret ingredient is and put it on that bottle and hopefully eat their own medicine. But yeah, there's, um, there's someone's sound production, but it's, and then we've got an activity. So we're going to be kayaking and uh, the zip lines and archery and, um, yeah. and bingo. RevThink is sponsoring the bingo night which I think is tomorrow night. So it's, it's, it's high net worth, um, big money yeah. stake. Big money. Yeah. That, that, that $20 of bingo winning or whatever. <laughs> in the process. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm already reduced a little bit of stress here. Just thinking about zip lining at Camp Mograph. So that's very cool. Um, let's dive into this a little bit. Cause let's talk about the formation of where stress, this stress comes from, or this burnout comes from. Um, the burnout truly comes from like a moment of stress. I think that we, anyone that's hit this moment knows that you hit a wall. And Matt, beforehand, we were talking about how like there's been moments where I couldn't remember my wife's cell phone number. Or you were saying like you will often lose your keys. Or Joe, you were saying like just to think about what comes next was already putting you into a mode of stress because it's like in a way you were already filled up with whatever those thoughts are. And the next thing, no matter how small or big it is, really just starts to tip us over, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 being a business owner, you're, you're always on, you're always responding to everything. Your adrenal gland is getting flogged senseless. And I think, you know, you just, you just push and push and push. And I, I certainly found a Deloitte where, you know, it was, it was always the end of the world every day. Like there was always an emergency every day and everything had to be responded to immediately. And I would just start to see these patterns whenever I was starting to fall apart was, yeah, I forget. First, I would forget 
all my banking passwords. Like normally I could just type them in, but they would, they would go. And then I would just start losing things and I would just leave things randomly. And I'd, I'd find myself like Mr. Magoo wandering around looking for my, all my stuff. And then I, sometimes I would just start to go, I'm like, I'm becoming pathetic. But I think you just need to start to recognize that these are some of the first learning points that your brain is just overworked and that you are not, it's like being drunk, really. Like you're not fit to operate a vehicle. You're not fit to make decisions because you are not in the right, right frame of mind and you're going to be acting reactively rather than objectively. Yeah. I almost want to, I'm going to create a quick poll here and see how people are feeling about this. Joe, how about you? What's your kind of experience been like in this situation? Well, I'd say I knew it before I felt it, which is, is almost the opposite, but it took feeling it to do anything about it. So if you wake up in the morning, sit down, look at your email, look at your calendar, whatever, and number one, there's more to do in a day than a human being could possibly do in a day. That's number one. And number two, if you're evaluating your sort of like responsibilities, I would look and be like, the things I'm accountable for during any semblance of business hours, eight to six are not the things that are going to move my business forward. Those were things that I saw them, but didn't recognize them as signs in real time. I was like, I guess I make the most important decisions for my business between 7 and 9 p.m. Objectively, that's nonsense, right? And that went on for months before, before it occurred to me that like, that's a symptom of burnout. That's not a symptom of being an entrepreneur, right? You have taken on too much and your decision-making is going to be bad as a result. It's uh, interesting that and I think. Oh, go ahead, Matt. So I, I think Joe, you said something interesting about you know feeling that I make the best decisions at that time, and I think part of it is your your ego is attached to being a business owner, and you feel like if I take my hands off the wheel, this thing can't steer itself. Yeah, we we put ourselves in that primary position, don't we? Sorry, Tim. What were you going to say? Oh, I, I was going to say like there's been a. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I feel like it's been uh, in a couple of places of social media where people are showing this promo for the Can Lions Festival, the Can Festival. And uh, it really is like a workaholic is all like the entire three minutes and with like false endings and whatever. It just stresses you out to watch somebody be stressed out. And I think the promotion has something to do with this is it basically says this is all of our life, right? It's kind of admitting something or almost joking about how the reality of of our life has a lot of moving pieces and you can never get out of it. And there's never an end to what's going on. Um, I think there's supposed to be like a sense of pride because I, and I know I feel this um, or have felt this myself sometimes is like, if I, if I'm that important or I appear to be that important or I act like I'm that important, I must be that important. And so we keep ourselves busy with busy work. We feel like we can't walk away or leave a client hanging. We have this like immediate reaction to always, Kind of impulsively answer all the questions. Um, but I also think like there's a sense of our our community, our industry. You don't know, gives us extra credit if we're that way. Like we're supposed to go until we burn out as a as a like a badge of honor. Um, and I think the reaction to that promo has been pretty honest out there, pissed, saying like, "Are what are we doing? Are we actually celebrating this kind of lifestyle?" But there, let's, if we're honest, maybe Ken is being honest and saying like, well, to be honest, there is an element of, of that nature in all of us, or at least in our industry that requires us to act that way. Yeah, it's a, you good, you good, Joe. On top of that, there is a dynamic about being in creative services, which is to say being in outsourced services. There are relationship dynamics with clients and the people who provide service to clients that an expectation, whether true or false, is created that if they need the thing, you do the thing because they pay you to do the thing. One of the things we were talking about, e even just a little bit before this, is oftentimes the, the sense of urgency, at least I found like in my experiences, like I was creating that sense of urgency. I was creating the perception that if the client said they need a thing, that I have to do that thing and I better do it quickly. Every client is a person and everyone knows that people have other priorities. But in, I forgot that, right? I was guilty of being like, no, 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 we have to do the thing because the client asked for it instead of sort of like raising my hand and saying, I don't have time for this. Can you, can you receive the thing in one business day or eight business days or sort of whatever the context was? And the answer was always yes, if I did it. But I created, I created false urgency and I created a false sense of um, 
I, you know, possibly my own importance in being able to answer with urgency, but urgency was not really as, as real as I was telling myself it was. Yeah, sure. Mm. Um, let's, uh, anybody else want to try to chime in here? Anyone else have like life experiences or a reality check of, of what, what it's like to be burned out or, um, just get a sense of it. Maybe you're in that moment. I just, you can raise your hand or just start talking. I can bring you, bring you into the conversation. Um, I Brian say something. Yeah. Yeah. On, I'll say something, Tim, because this is a topic that, uh, I'm pretty familiar with too. It, um, Joe and Matt, I don't know about y'all, but for me, it got to a point where the burnout actually became a source of further burnout. So it's almost like a spiral type thing. Does that make sense? Like, uh, and I had gotten to a point I recognized I was burnout, tried to work through it. And some of that may have been like you were saying, Matt, a little bit of ego and a little bit of necessity. And even in knowing that still the, the anxiety of the burnout created it to even go any further or, or created, created it, uh, uh, make making it worse that's something I, I battled pretty extensively and then got together with a, a group of guys that were dealing with some of the same things and one of the amazing things that happened is just by verbalizing it and saying it almost like this happening here you could relax and say oh my god it's not just me it's not my problem uh because that was the other thing it was a guilt associate associated with it mm, well said is yeah. that the retreat that you did at the Johnny Cash, that is. is that the one? Yeah. Yes. Why don't that you is. Just, That's it. Why don't you give us one of the one of the ways you kind of dealt with that? Because it was such an interesting conference that you made, or, or or group that you made when you did that. Yeah, I was I was going through it pretty, uh, pretty badly, and uh, talked to a couple of guys. Guys, luckily, just, I I wanted to get a group of of uh, folks together uh, to get away from everything and get out to the, uh, honestly, to get out to nature, kind of separate from the woods and, or, or separate from life and get out to the woods. And he had access. He was a part owner in Johnny Cash's cabin where Johnny Cash lived. And I wanted something that was like, Hey, there's a magical thing that brings us here for a reason, you know? Um, so I brought seven people out to the woods and it was, um, not just business owner, business owners. It was a uh, middle-aged career folks that were just kind of dealing with it. And I was pretty bold in saying, I'm going through this. I need some people around me. And the people that came were, were all of a similar, similar thing. And so we spent three days in this cabin, eating, drinking, cooking, talking, building fires. And it was amazing what happened over the course of uh, three days. And at the end of that three days, pretty much all of our spouses said, okay, when are y'all going again? We would, <laughs> we would like you to do this again. <laughs> yeah. And we, we were talking before Brian about how, like, you know, when you're really stressed out, it's hard to think of something awesome or inspiring to do and how sometimes you actually need to start booking this stuff in advance. And it's almost like recognizing the fact that, yeah, you're probably going to be burnt out after the end of financial year and things will probably be quiet in July. It's probably a good time to go on a houseboat or it's probably a good time to go to that conference you always wanted to go to. And I, I was at Annecy last week and you could see that a lot of people had just booked that in annually. And that was their thing was like, I'm going to go eat cheese and speak to my old friends. Yeah. I do like that. Thank you for sharing that, Brian. <clears throat> there is something, by the way, whenever you go to Johnny Cash's ranch, please include me again. That's exactly what <laughs> I need in my life. There is um there is the, the reality of just the, what it means to recognize that you're in it to reach out and to connect with others. I think that's one of the first steps we all recognize that's necessary. It's almost, it's, it's why we're thankful we're in a community, a rev community exists. You can, someone can post that out there or, or I saw someone on LinkedIn uh, admit that they were burning out. And I already saw like, Tim, I think you might've responded to the same LinkedIn post is the, the, the person was asking like, where can you connect? And a lot of people in the community were just saying, here's a coach or here's a conference or here's you know, um, like a, a resource available. Um, and it's, isn't it always so obvious? It's like that first step really is recognizing it and, and reaching out and finding it. And that hurdle, whatever that first hurdle is, I think is what Brian's recognizing. It's like that, the thought of recognizing I have to admit there's burnout is leading me to more burnout. It's the spiral of, of admitting that I'm in, in trouble that way. 
Um, interesting human response we all have out there. I think we humans help each other get out of the hum, hum, human responses that are programmed inside of our brain. Linda, I want to read uh, your your response because, uh, by the way, I'm so glad you're here. I was thinking about you just this morning. I was going to just text you to say, how, how are you and find out how things are going. Um, so thanks for sharing this. She says, it, it, it is a part of the industry and that you have to work the hardest. But then when, when something in life goes wrong, you don't have any internal resources to give you enough resilience. And there really is something of like we it's easy to be workaholic to focus just on this industry that, you know, who doesn't love what we do? This is a fun thing we get to do. These are problems we love to solve. There are people we like to work with. And we kind of become insular into one world, solving one set of problems, and then life issues. That could be a, a family member, or a child, a, a friend of yours, a business issue, whatever that comes from right field, unrelated to what you love to do every day. And sometimes that can just knock you out. And I like how you said this, uh, Linda, like there's not enough you know, re internal resources for that resilience. We don't really reserve enough, do we, in the stressful field that we live with them? And I think along those lines, that has to do with not just recognition, but the first part of action against it. So again, the thing for me kept being, there's more to do today than I could possibly do, than really any human being could possibly do. But it went on that I just kept trying. And so obviously in the clarity of, of sort of like, having been a little bit removed from that, like it was deeply irrational to even try to work 14 hours and accomplish 32 things on the to-do list. Um, and so part of that acceptance is like, well, if my state as a business owner is, there's always going to be a lot to do. And when I'm working, I always have to be doing a thing that's valuable and, and that I need to prioritize. There's a difference between that and maybe today I'll catch up or maybe this week I'll catch up. Maybe this weekend is the one where I finally get the last thing checked off the to-do list. Like if you just accept that you're living in, in a lot of responsibility, I found that to be a really uh, an easier way to start saying no to stuff. And frankly, to start switching off. It's like, well, it's not gonna get better whether I work harder or not. Uh, I just, that reframe I find really useful. So Linda, do you think that you're in a, in a place of reflection that you wish you would have left some of those internal resources so that you could deal with a moment if you it, when it comes oh gosh you know i think probably you know just what joe is saying is like you get on the treadmill and you just don't have i think when you're in it you don't have the perspective until it's sort of you start to realize like here you are you're working so hard and then all this other stuff starts to happen and you're just like oh how important is my work really? Like you start to reprioritize and then, um, I mean, I'm still in the middle of everything and mm -hmm. it's just uh, like, I'm just really trying to tread water and keep from like everything going under at this point. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that and maybe this is something other people have um, had because the last couple of years have been sort of, I don't have like the financial wherewithal to be able to put into place some other, like bring a project manager on, offload some of the stuff that I'm doing. And I'm just like, okay, I know I need, I need to just make enough money to keep going. And, um, and then plus, you know, I have all this, as you know, family stuff going on and it's, it's just really hard, but I, I don't have a solution. And I guess that's why, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm just thought, you know, maybe I can learn from some other people who might, I don't know if there is a solution sometimes when you're in these situations, I think sometimes you just have to get through it and then maybe regroup afterwards when you have some perspective. Yeah. I, I think the, one of the first things we turn to is resilience. I know for me, I like an, as an endurance runner or endurance person, I could, I have a I have a personality or biology. I can stay awake for two days straight, and it doesn't really affect me. There's just these physical attributes that I rely on, which are completely unhealthy. When I'm when I hit 65, I'm going to regret every moment of of sleep I didn't hit. Right, um, but in the in the time where you're having advancing or taking taking on responsibility or just trying to pay your bills, like you have to get the next client to keep the cash flow going or whatever that that uh, wheel that we're on. 
um, really drives us into, we need to find some sort of like moment of strategy or reprieve to, to give us, get us out of that, that, uh, that treadmill. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing. I, I you know, again, Linda, we, oh, let's catch up because I know you, you just yeah. popped in my mind today, literally, as I was making my, <laughs> eating my avocado this morning, I was like, Oh, what, I wonder how you're doing. There's, um, there's just so much going on. I, you know, I'll admit to you guys myself, it's just like I have, it's not always a big, huge burden. It can be something as simple as like, my, I'm going to be a grandpa, like it literally any day can be tomorrow can be a week from tomorrow. I don't know when it's, but so I have this thing, it's not bad, but I know that the day that comes, my to-do list is going to be shot. And it, there's a really weird, and you never want to admit this, that you're, that you, that you want to get that to-do list done, even though like life's greatest moments are happening at you. And there's a really bad feeling of like, I can't, I can't walk away from the the meeting or the event or the weekly briefing. I don't know what it'll be, but by the way, I, we might cancel the weekly briefing if the baby comes any moment. So just be ready for that. Um, but I think they're like their entrepreneurial edge that we have that gets us uh, in that position that we're, but we win every day or every client or every moment is one that's almost like the same curse. It comes back to haunt us as we need those reserves for ourselves. We're so much used to giving it to other people. Um, yeah, whenever I dip into the darkest points, I've been reading the Daily Stoic a lot. And I think like Stoicism relates a lot to some of what Linda's talking about. We, we, we think of Stoicism as just we have to keep going and we have to endure pain without feeling so that we can maintain a good. But then reading Stoic philosophy, because there were five great Stoic philosophers, and it actually is more about focusing on the task at hand and 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 even compassion and trying to understand people's feelings around you rather than feeling that you are you have to take every arrow and you have to um bear the pain of everything yeah oh matt's the philosopher here hey remy hey hey guys no i was just um um thinking about what linda was saying i think when we're when we've got so many things on um Sometimes that's when it's good to talk to our, our I think you guys already mentioned it, our close friends, our family members, those that of us that have spouses, to just rem remind us of the reality is there are some things that are more important. Um and just being grateful of some of the simple things. Um, you know, having loved ones that are, that are still here with us and um you know appreciate some of the small things that we have in our lives sometimes those kind of conversations puts things in perspective of of, of what's more important now um, in our lives um than some of the other things that we worry about that we can't really control so um, I, I found i found it beneficial to sometimes just be frank and talk to some of my closest friends and loved ones and they remind me of what's really important you know so that's Beautiful yeah. man. Thank you so much. I'm gonna do something right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the spotlights from us right here so I can we can see each other's faces. I kind of want if you if you're in a place that you can just turn on your camera and slit, I wanted you guys to all see each other, just kind of know that we're kind of in a community and we're we're here for each other. Those of us have our camera on are obviously ones that are willing to engage in the conversation. But I think there's something important to say, like, look at these, all these faces are showing up at a topic because we know this is a real topic and we're doing something together. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, I also think that there's an honesty that we, and trust that we have with each other that we can put ourselves out there. Like no one's shaming one of us for being an entrepreneur that has a little bit of a weakness um, today or, or a little bit of stress in our lives. I think there's a reality of like, we all have to know entrepreneurialism has a cutting edge to it. Um, I'm curious if anybody here would be willing to just share, we'll, we'll go around it, we have as many as we want to, but share a fear. Like, what is it we're actually afraid of that makes us keep on going, even though we know we're running towards burnout? Like, what's a very easy, like, fear that we say, oh, well, yeah, but I have to go do this. Yeah, I'm Undoubtedly. covering covering your nut. You know what I mean? Like I'm covering your your mortgage payments, covering your your kids' expenses, putting food on the table. At a certain point, your your family grows to a certain size, and you have to you have to afford to keep it going. Totally, uh, Terry. You know, That's exactly right. Provision, now, right? Who will do it provision. if I don't do it? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
that's a perfect but, place to start. What do you say, Remy? Yeah, I was thinking the fear of losing a client, losing a losing a deal. Um, if the client's unhappy, that can be overwhelming. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like reputation could be attached to that, or long term relationship can be attached to that, or yeah, we have a lot of like these relationships that we have to break of those relationships can be very, very like scary, huh? What's I'd like to build up on the reputation one. Uh, my biggest fear always was if it isn't done by me or done the way that I uh, the way that I want it to be done, that someone will find out that I've sold them a bill of goods that they that didn't get delivered, right? Or I will have some guilt that they paid for X and they didn't receive it. Um, Part of that's ego, but part of it also is like part of a growing business, right? Sometimes you have juniors doing work, but I harbored an enormous amount of guilt if it didn't meet a standard that I felt I had sold someone. Um, yeah, that was mostly guilt. I, I, lo I, I that. love that idea of like there is a guilt, like I didn't follow through. Yeah, that's a good. Who else has one that you can share? It doesn't have to be for you personally. Just a, just something that if you think about this, what would make us keep on going, even though we're running into a brick wall? Is anybody afraid of time? Like if you, like they could take your career off path or you'll miss a moment um, or miss a key key turning event or a, 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 I don't know, a, an industry-wide conference. Yeah, but this is the only one this year. And if I don't do that, I'm gonna lose this time. I'm gonna lose the momentum. I guess that'd be FOMO. Like anyone running into walls because of FOMO? Yeah. Okay, that, that's just me then. <laughs> okay. no, yeah, I, I, had a, I had a conversation, I had, I had a big yelling argument with a friend about retirement. He works in a very manual industry and he was like, I can't wait to retire. Any, I just want to retire. And I was like, I can't actually imagine retiring. Like, I'm enjoying my life and I want to keep going for as long as I'm relevant. So I think, I mean, certainly as you start looking at the second half of your career and going, realizing that there is a, there's an end to it, um, oh, yeah. that's scary. I you just use a keyword that too, like relevance. Who doesn't think relevance is important in a creative industry? That's a huge one we always fight for. What do you got, Will? I was just going to say, there's a, there's a little bit of a, a balance between fear and, I don't know, I, I, the positive spin on it would be a challenge, right? To see, to keep going because it, it feels challenging in some capacity. And it ties a little bit into what Matt was just saying, which is like, staying relevant <laughs> yeah right the challenge is to learn something new or whatever and, and continue doing yeah um i don't i i feel like i i was burnt out a long time ago i i kind of gave up on those feelings um but that's because i'm in a better place of like no like understanding myself a little bit more and just one of the things that we do and we do it every month um twice a month is business therapy i know this is kind of a uh, I don't know if this is the right place to talk about it, but um, I have a partner. We run the business together and I, I used to have two partners and getting on the same page about, you know, what we wanted the company to be was difficult. And so we needed a facilitated guided conversation to try to figure out what that was. And um, it's not available everywhere. It's not necessarily something that um, you can easily find, but uh our business therapist has been working with us for about five years, six years, someone who knows us intimately, deeply. Um, and that was just through conversations. Um, and, you know, and it was like an hour, an hour session. And we were yeah. really just talking about what, like our fears. We all bring to the table some, some baggage that someone else can't see. And understanding that baggage before you get there is like, has totally changed the way I think about business. That's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, and in some cases, I think it's true for you, Will, but some cases our partner is our spouse. So we're we're basically, we need th couples therapy and it needs to be siloed from like our love life, our relational life, our family life and our business life. It'd be good to have different silos for those conversations and not let the dinner table be about business or whatever, you know, how those things bleed over with each other, so. Um, that's a really good thing. And, and Will, by the way, you're doing something great. You basically you walked away from the office. You're traveling the U.S., getting Airbnbs around the world and and taking a time to rebuild and refocus. So 
it's one of the first things that like, I want to talk about do like, how do we, what do we do about this? How do we actually stop before we do it? And we've, we've kind of like given each other this encouragement already, but number one thing is we just have to admit there's a problem, right? That's the, one of the first things that we have to put into place and, and acknowledge that there's something going on. And I appreciate everyone here that's sharing and turning on their camera because it's already the beginning of like, gosh, at least we know we're not foolishly the only person in the room doing this thing, but other people are there and they'd be part of it. Uh, Joe, you had a, a an idea. Uh, what, you had a, a, a possible solution to this too when we were talking before the show. Uh, what's one of your ideas? I think... Well, I've got I've got several because I have been through this and I'm only just on the other side. Um, but one for me, when we recognize uh, when we recognize that we're not in a place of max productivity and, and frankly, a place of stress, you know, we talked about maybe pre-booking a vacation or taking a weekend, but not trying to turn one thing into two things. Don't not trying to write an email when you're at a conference is in itself a way to create focus you're probably going to have to write some emails, right? You're the owner. Um, but understanding that at any given point, if you catch yourself doing two things at once, you're doing one thing too many. And just even like a, like a rubber band on the wrist situation, I'm going to focus on this thing for 30 minutes. I'm going to That's send emails so for 10 minutes. Anything like that to get down to one thing at a time, no matter how long it takes, is a huge first step. It was for me. That's huge. I, I love that, that little step thing. Uh, for me, like I to walk over and give my wife a hug and come back. Like it's 30 second jog, but to, how many times I'm not doing that. I just need to get up from my desk and go do something very simple is, is a really good small reminder. That's great. Matt, I feel like we get to draw from, Oh, did we lose Matt? Oh, here's, there you see my no, no, I'm still here. Matt, we always get to draw from your mom's uh, mom being a, a therapist experience here, but you had a, a, another couple of ideas that you thought would be helpful to share. Yeah, yeah, no, and she, she's a psychiatrist, and we, you know, we talk about stress and and many things like that. I, I, I think following on from what Joe said, it's like also recognizing if you're away, you're away. My old business partner would be, you know, he said, oh, "I'm, I'm always on, I'm always available," and um, like the fact was, he was on a surfboard out the back of a break in Bali, and the time I needed him, he was not there, and he would chime in six hours later with like this brilliant idea that he had while he was all relaxed and stuff, and it's like, just be away just like go away and be away and come back because you're, you're not that useful while you're away. And I think, you know, we, we, again, like we were talking about ego and feeling that your hand needs to be on the wheel and no one else can do it. Like if, if you've built a team, if you have anyone you can trust and you work with, trust them and be sure of what you're doing and go away and come back better. Yeah. Super smart. Just there's obvious, like the, the getaway, the breakaway, um, for me, I, uh, I think my encouragement is community. I think what I've learned more and more is that I don't know why it works this way. I'm pretty sure humans are supposed to be together, but there's just something so great to call my buddy Andy when I'm totally stressed because I'm feeling it more now than ever. And Andy doesn't work in our industry. He's a realtor in Idaho. But just have a guy that like, you know, you can just let your guard down really fast and reach out. It's a seven minute conversation. He usually throws in two ridiculous jokes. And we talk about our kids, but you just go like, oh yeah, my friend, you know, like it just reminds me, oh yeah, I have this friend, Andy, Andy's my friend. And just that immediate connection, it's a, it's incredible. It's incredible. I have this little watch stress relief thing on my watch and it goes from like, you know, orange to the yellow, whenever I talk to Andy. Um, so that's just a, an easy, easy way to, to do it. Anybody have like here have another, uh, one more? Oh yeah, go ahead. Anybody else have another kind of one quick thing that they, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Okay. So this is less of a fear and more of an acknowledgement. One of the things that caused my burnout and is still one of the biggest points of stress for me is when I feel like I'm chasing the happiness, the fulfillment, the whatever it might be of everybody else in my company, if that makes sense. It's always, I've given everything I've got. I've gotten, I've, paying as much as I can pay. I've given all the benefits I can give. I'm fighting for liquidity in the company. I'm fighting for my partners and it's still not enough. That that continues to be, if I had one overarching theme for my the demon that chases me, and, and then at the same time, it's not only my fighting is hard 
for them as possible and feel like I'm be being asked for more. I deeply care about the well-being of everybody on our team. And I want to do the best for everybody that I can. And then I have to make business decisions at the same time. Yeah. So that. I, I love that last back. one because it's so counterintuitive, but it's really the idea of putting your oxygen mask on first before you put it on the person that you're helping. And we, we over dedicate ourselves, this codependency of entrepreneurialism that just over dedicates and throws ourselves as a log on the fire instead of taking care of ourselves first so that we can take care of others and admitting that we're not a superhero, that we have a limit is a, is a key element of that. Yeah, Brian, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Along those lines, those motivations, again, sort of like some can drive in toxic and some very true and genuine create the feeling that the only way out is through. The question I started asking myself was like, well, what if one of the ways out is out? And what I mean by that is like, uh, I feel I have to do these things. What happens if I don't? Does anything happen if I don't? And it had to start with the teeniest tiny things, like whatever, responding to an email within a certain time frame. Or And they got bigger and bigger to like, what happens if I don't look at our financials every day? What if I only look every week or whatever, right? But like, I started asking myself, what happens if I don't? And testing in smaller and smaller increments until I was doing less. If something happens, if I put an employee or a company or a client in jeopardy, well, then something happens if I don't do that and I should probably do it, right? Cool, that's a priority. But there are so many things I found at least like, oh man, nothing happens if I don't do that. Or I don't do it with the same frequency. Eventually you have to do things. That it was it was a relief for me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and if you're dealing with if you're dealing with risk averse people, at risk averse clients, you just need to tell them when you're going to do it. You don't need to do it immediately. Like they'll ask you for that report, they'll ask you for that PDF, but you say, "I'll get it to you on Wednesday." Like it doesn't need to be. I need it now. I I used to always jump when someone asked for something, and I think just tell them when they're going to get it. Yeah, I that that yeah. was one of my points too. It's like reevaluate your reevaluate your workload is a big piece and element here. Like if you really, you know, if you gave yourself the five minutes to write your to-do list and then you ask yourself a question, what are really my priorities? And you were honest, all of a sudden you could recognize what needs to be done today. And I'm not sure Linda's with us anymore, but it's almost one of those things of like, when you're looking for that small gap, that small window to be start opening the window up, but just the gap you need to, that's often where you can find it is to just prioritizing something from a, a one to a two can give yourself a break. And then, don't let the crazy moments that you've been given pass you by. Like, I don't know about you, but sometimes when someone cancels on me, I just feel like it's such a relief. And then stupid me, I just run back to my email in that half hour instead of saying, I wasn't going to have that half hour to do my email anyways. I should just go up and eat a banana and go stand outside for five minutes and get some sunlight or something like that. We don't give ourselves mm -hmm. enough of that break of like, just take the gift that's been given to you of time uh, when you get that chance. Yeah, I was I was gonna say um Tim, I'm not sure if it's you that said it or Joe that said it, but um um that modesty of uh, realizing what we can handle and what we can't handle is so important as well. Because uh, for me anyway, there's been moments where I've taken on too much, too many projects, and then I'm super burnt out. I'm I'm you know I've, I'm already maxed out, and then I've brought this extra stress on myself. And if I was a bit more modest and realized, well, I I can only take so much, I can only accept this level, then I wouldn't have maybe put myself in that that situation. So it's, you know, be modest in that sense and realize I can only take a certain amount. Um, it's also uh, something that I've learned as well that's important to to realize our limitations. So Terry- We're not great at that honesty or humility as entrepreneurs, are we? Mm -hmm. So Terry, tell us the truth. Right. You've been you've been running a business for nearly 20 years. Right. Did every single job you get was they were they all important or could you have said no to some of those jobs? Uh, someone told me once to never say no to a job, Tim. <laughs> don't don't listen to that guy. He was a lot younger. <laughs> than I, you know, I think burnout was maybe more of an issue for me when we we're first 10 years of Roger, you know, when you're doing everything, you know, and I would do a lot and I was really good at working really fast and also working really late. Uh, but then you, you get to, I think you get to a certain size 
which I'm still struggling to see if this is a sweet spot or not, but then you can afford to take time. You can delegate, you find people that are trusted that work under you and then you can, you know, take time off. And that's really been the best thing for my personal burnout issues is just being able to step away. Like just came back from vacation, had the Slack notifications off and, and I feel good, you know? So I think it's about really, really kind of un, unwinding. Yeah, it's just such a moment but that didn't happen moment. until like 10 years so you got to be like or i would say maybe more like 12 12 years so after 12 years you'll, you'll, you'll feel really good there's a i was debating okay. whether or not i was going to be this guy in this group i decided i would see how it's going to go but i am going to do it right because there is an uh, expectation that um, the response to being burned out is taking a vacation and the fact that you can't take a vacation means that you just have to live in that filth. Um, so a thing I do now, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1 p.m., I go to the gym and I will not take a meeting and I turn people down and people who say that they have an urgent meeting get turned down. And I lift weights for one full hour in the middle of the day. One, I solved the 2 p.m. problem for myself and now I can work in the afternoons, which is amazing. But two, like taking that time, taking time for myself takes the form of three hours a week. It doesn't take the form of two weeks away, although I suppose it could. But when that's not an option, like three hours a week back for just myself is the most amazing thing ever. And sorry, I had to make it about going to the gym, but like that hour in the middle of the day is a game changer, however you use it. I tried that recently. That that resonates with me so much. I tried that recently and it's amazing. It's almost like therapy, going to the gym around that time. It's amazing. It's, I'm addicted. I can't go back. Like what I do from two to 6 PM now is so much more productive. Like times infinity. I, I love it. It's almost 2 PM or 3 PM right now. I got to turn things. What are you saying, Ryan? Ryan, you, Ryan's typing away. You can, we'll let you talk in this meeting, Ryan. I'm not, I'm not an owner, so I don't know if it counts, but I just, <laughs> yeah, I, I love hearing what everybody says. Um, I, I, I really think it's like, if you think back when you're an artist and you went from being like an animator or designer to become an art director or a creative director, it almost felt like completely foreign territory and all your instincts were off. I feel like a lot of times with shop owners, they find themselves wanting to get behind the team and help push everybody along by themselves. Like a superhero, like I'll get on the box, I'll do the design, I'll stay late, I'll put the deck together, I'll get on the call, I'll save the day. But I think what like the shop really needs, the places I've been where it's been the healthiest, it feels weird at first, but like when you're actually out and you're not seen and you're out and going and collecting and connecting and collecting new ideas and you're an explorer almost being like, hey, hey, come with me. I, we we got to go here now. And this is what we need. And it is absolutely thousand percent the exact opposite instinct for how you got to that place in the first point. Because very few people running these shops came in from business or came in from marketing or came from an agency. They came from being an artist. And I feel like it's so totally, but I know like when I've been in shops, it's like, that's what I need the most is like, I need you to go out there and figure out where we got to go. And you should, the the idea that the team is healthy enough that you can go out and do that means that the studio is humming along the way it should be. That we don't need you to be in with the producer. We don't need you to be in on the box. We don't need you to be fixing things with the client. You're out there. That's the luxury you've afforded yourself to go whatever size you are. But that's also like the lifeblood of the studio from not sinking into just being like order taking whatever we did 10 years ago we're going to do again now like you need to be out there you almost have afforded the right to be able to do that because you've made the choice to be the owner yeah it's um, almost a requirement like you're the visionary leader you have to have a moment I, I my saying is you have to have some provision for the vision right you have to go find the place to bring into it so that you can have some vision you have to find a source you have to find provision for the vision I mean, you, every you time you talk, like I keep thinking that every person that's a business owner wishes they had an employee that is as active as you thinking through the solutions to the problems, because many of us need to delegate to somebody and to trust somebody and be able to hand it over to someone that's trustworthy and a leader. It's a blessing to, to have those employees. Um, there's a book being passed around called Buy Back Your Time. And one of the big takeaways mm. in the book, if you haven't read it yet, is delegate. And he's in a very smart ways teaches you how to delegate, mm -hmm. like first delegate your calendar to somebody. You don't delegate your whole <laughs> company right away. And he has a way of growing that delegation. And I personally have found that very helpful myself. And I've helped, you know, like some of the rev think um, strategy method is to grow this, your company, like a, like a uh, snowball rolling down the hill. You have to start small and let it build up. Um, and I hear like, you know, the idea of just 
who you actually are, letting go of some of it, trusting your team, and then walking out and seeing and providing the vision, as you're saying, Ryan, is such a, a big takeaway of, you know, it's actually the job. The job is not being on the box. Other people can do that if you have to. But it, it's probably like the most disruptive choice you can make, man. Like I remember when I was at IF and thought I was smarter than I, I was and be like, why aren't the owners here? I used to do it all the time with Peter and Chip. Like, why aren't they here? <laughs> they should find like, where the fuck are they? And it was like, no, they're actually doing their job. They were going out for us to go and, you know, like whatever the path is going to be or the connection to be like, they're, they're doing it, whether it's biz dev or learning new things or meeting yeah. new people. I'm like, oh, it took me a long time after I left that place to realize that they were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. But I thought I was way smarter. I'm like, no, you should be here with us. Like, so I feel like even you make the decision, try to do it, your own team is going to be like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Like, where are you? And it's like, no, you got to, you got to like craft They've that They've been in business for 25 years. So I'm guessing, I don't see any, they, they might know something. Closing the doors anytime soon. So they're doing pretty well. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been a long conversation. I appreciate it. I would love any other thoughts. Feel free to put out there. Any other voices? Don't want to cut anyone off. Um, can I say this? I say this often, but I actually want you guys to hear it today. It's like, there's, it's such a blessing to do my job um, in this industry. I, I, I chose it. You know, my days and my burnout required me to kind of pivot and, and make up my own rules. And so to build a consultancy where no one knew what a consultant was in 2006 was kind of fun. And thank God for Terry Lee believing I could be a consultant because he was my first client who actually believed in me and gave me the job of solving the where's my money problem and all that stuff. But the um, what what happens when you have my my job is I hear, get to hear some big picture stuff and you feel like the reason that you all have each other is because you can trust each other. And I'm just so thankful that you that there's opportunities to share, to trust, to build each other up. Um, so I truly love my job and I truly love you all. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you in this process, anything, this is when you just reach out to me, DM, let me know and, and join community, be part of community. This is, these are conversations that we, I think community is there so that we know each other and familiar so we can be honest when we need to be honest. So, uh, feel free to put yourself out there that way. Um, if there's anything you guys could do for each other too, this is the moment where like, just um, look at the faces and the names on this call and, and know that there's a body of people there um, loving and supporting one another. Uh, like each other's social medias and, and do that work that's out, out there to keep, keep the momentum going. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little sneak pre preview into uh, we're looking at quarterly reports in two weeks and um, I things are looking good. I'm going to tell you like the wind is blowing. So the, the tide is changing and that's kind of nice. It's not everywhere you already want it to be. Um, so I've been really processing this idea of cutting edge of technology versus the cutting edge of creativity. And I think there's a lot of insights to be gained from what we're seeing right now. Um, so we'll be sharing those in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, next week we are not going to be here because it's the 4th of July in the US, Remy. So, you know, we have an Independence Day from the UK years. <laughs> we appreciate you giving us our country so we can celebrate the 4th of July. Um, oh man, Jadis, have fun, have fun. We'll be yeah, working. Right. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks and uh, we have some uh, great news to share and what have you. Um, but in the meantime, you guys have a great holiday. Thanks for being together in community and, and let us know what we can do. Um, we'll post this video for others as well. Blessings to you guys. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.